Hungary is now a proud member of the European Union. It's located slap bang in the centre of Europe and borders on seven other countries. To the west, Austria. To the north, Slovakia. In the east, with the Ukraine and Romania. And to the south, a clutch of former Yugoslav states. It's rarely been a comfortable placement as Hungary sits on top of that east-west divide that has often been fatal in European history. One moment relating to the German-speaking lands, the next to the Slavs and to the Russians. And let's not forget for several centuries the Turks coming up from the south. So uncomfortable, yes, but what a wonderful crossroads for ideas, for influences and for food. We're driving along in southern Hungary, just outside the town of Szeged. This is a very exciting day for me because I've been researching Bartok's music for over 30 years. Written several books about him, travelled all over the world talking about Bartok. But I've never actually been to where Bartok was born. It's a pretty tense place here between Hungary, Serbia and Romania. When Bartok was born in 1881, he was born into the town called Nod Sent Miklos. But then in 1918, at the end of the First World War, this town was occupied by the Serbs. And the following year, in the Treaty of Trianon, it was given to Romania. It's now called San Nicolae Mare, quite a different town from the one in which Bartok was born 130, 140 years ago. And it'll be an exciting moment to see the town where he lived for the first seven years of his life. Here we are looking at the Bartok statue in Bartok's birthplace, not St. Miklos or San Nicolao Mare. It was in 1881 and is today a highly cosmopolitan place with changing populations of Romanians, Germans, Slavs and Hungarians. And it says, Bela Bartok, composer, pianist and folk music collector, born not St. Miklos, March the 25th, 1881, died in New York, 26th of September, 1945. We're standing on the site where Bela Bartok was born. This is where he had his first piano lessons. This is where Bartok first learnt his tunes. And this also is where Bartok's father died. He was the director of an agricultural college and died when Bartok was only age six. That was a cataclysmic event for the family because it caused Bartok, his mother and his daughter to have to move to several towns around the Austro-Hungarian Empire as his mother sought work as a teacher. In 1903, Bartok graduated from the Budapest Academy of Music. In preparation for his final exams, he decided to give his first full solo recital as a pianist. He performed works by Chopin, Beethoven, Liszt and several other romantic composers, but also performed two of his own compositions, a fantasy and a miraculous work, a study just for the left hand. It would be interesting to know what the people here in this town thought of that performance and those special compositions by a boy from their own town. From an early age, Bartok's ears were opened to many musical traditions. Western art music, local popular music, and popular song. Despite these many traditions and the fluctuating fortunes of his country, Bartok was a loyal Hungarian. It was important to him, as with so many Hungarians today, to speak your own language, to eat your own food, sit on your own furniture, and pass on an independent Hungarian spirit. One of Bartok's earliest compositions for orchestra was his Kossuth Symphony. General Kossuth was the 19th century Hungarian patriot. 
for he was the one who led the Hungarians in their abortive war of independence against the Austrians. This occurred in 1848 and 1849, when most of Europe was in upheaval. Bartok's music glorifies this David versus Goliath battle, but it does it in the Germanic style of Richard Strauss and his heroic work, Ein Heldenleben. Perhaps the best known part of the Koschritz Symphony is the funeral march which occurs at its end. But this is not a funeral march for Koschrut, who in fact fled into exile and lived quite well for another half century. It was a funeral march for the defeated Hungarian people. From an early age, Bartok could see that the Austro-Hungarian Empire was faltering. But he also understood that the future of the people of Central Europe lay together. The River Danube united them. Rising in Germany, it flows through ten different countries before emptying into the Black Sea in the Ukraine. Well, he became aware of some kind of borrowing between different ethnic groups or groups speaking different languages um, in 1906 when he collected in Upper Hungary and found that Slovaks, some Slovaks sing songs which are known to Hungarians with Hungarian texts. And so he decided to collect among Slovaks as well and then immediately became interested in, in what was specifically Slovak in the material. Now, of course, uh, these minorities in Hungary were probably fairly um, suppressed minorities, and Bartók very much sympathized mm -hmm. with them, uh, be himself coming from some kind of a minority, from, from the second nation within the dual monarchy. Yes. yes, so of uh, course, the he, Hungarians felt in relation yeah, to, to the Austrians, yes. the Romanians and Slovaks felt towards the Hungarians. Yeah, Hungarian. Yes, yes. Coming from this part of the world, it's not surprising then that Bartok's music is peppered with all sorts of national references to Hungarian songs, to Slovak or Romanian dances, or indeed to Bulgarian rhythms, bumpy ones like this. Bartok also used scales from all over Eastern Europe. He discovered late in life that a, an idea that he'd thought was particularly innovative in fact was one found in Dalmatian scales from the Serbo-Croatian region. It went like this. In his Music for Strings, Percussion and Celeste, he had this tune. turned it into a much more open tune, still the same notes in the same order, but it was a wider scale. And he realised that what he'd heard in these Serbo-Croatian tunes was a principle he'd adopted for years, but which had been there in folk song for perhaps hundreds of years before he'd ever come up with it. It'd be like us in Britain having this idea. But instead using it in a different scale. or even more radically.
Bartok was also at the crossroads of history. During his lifetime, Hungary transformed from empire through republic to regency and then on through fascism to communist occupation. Hungarian society, both urban and rural, was coming under huge strain. The tensions were growing. In 1939, war was declared. Two months later, Bartok's beloved mother died. He knew he had to go. But where to? Like Stravinsky and Schoenberg, like Rachmaninoff and Hindemith, Bartok headed off to the United States. <laughs>